next one is the scary one. And I think probably at the beginning of this year, I tended to think that uh, uh, in the sport of rugby, we call it handbags. When people start fighting on the pitch and it's all over in about 45 seconds, we say, oh, they're slapping around with the handbags. And I thought this was a bit of a spat and it would all be over by Easter. But my thinking has changed. I think we are witnessing the resetting of the global economy. And therefore, I'm much more concerned about the ramifications of this trade war than I was nine months ago. So the trade wars will reduce international trade, and that will mean less goods flowing, and that will also mean less freight flowing. So it has ramifications for us. Let's look a little bit further into uh, what's happening here. The <clears throat> uh, United Nations, the UNCTAD, uh, I was at a talk they did last week, and they said there's three big picture ramifications of this trade war. First of all, trade volumes will decrease. There'll be a direct decrease, and then there'll be an indirect decrease through the component suppliers. So if we think about high tech, we think about China exports of high tech. If that reduces in volume, or when it reduces in volume, all the component suppliers in Japan, Taiwan, Vietnam, will also be impacted by a reduction in demand. So there's direct and there's indirect ramifications. What they also pointed out is that in the medium to long term, this current environment of uncertainty spooks investors. Investors want to invest in markets and times of having an element of certainty to minimize their risk. So whilst we have all this uncertainty going on and there's no sign of it going away, Trump and Xi Jinping might meet in November on the sides of one of the global events, but I honestly don't think we should expect much change to come out of that. So this spooks investors and that has medium to long term impact. And then thirdly, it also puts into question, once again, the role of the World Trade Organization in its aspiration for a global multilateral system that never really quite got there, is now being disintermediated even further by an expansion of bilateral and multilateral agreements undermining the global WTO principles. So when we look at the trade war ramifications and look at freight, and specifically look at air freight, these tariffs on $360 billion of goods, I think that's 260 from the US, and I know it doesn't really matter, but it's a total of 360. That impacts more than one out of every two kilos of freight that's airlifted between the United States and China. One out of every two is impacted by those tariffs. It's almost a million tons of air freight per year. Outbound from China to the US, it's almost half the total air freight. Inbound to China from the US, it's almost 90%. So why haven't we seen this imploding? Well, we haven't yet because the implications of this have not flushed through yet. And that's a second concern for me. One first concern is it's not going away anytime soon. And two, the second concern is I think generally we're a bit complacent because we haven't seen the full ramifications yet. And in fact, we've seen an actual surge in some areas of freight to get the products moved prior to the first round of tariffs, and then secondly, more recently, prior to the tariffs increasing on the 1st of January, and of course also the peak season for the holiday season. So I think the full ramifications of these changes are yet to be seen. I think Q1, Q2 next year will see the impact of this. And that's why I think I titled this one, Scary. Now, 
What could happen to these trade flows? Well, there's a few things that could happen. The exporter could absorb the costs of the tariff at the other end and continue business as normal. Many exporters can afford to do that. They don't have enough margin to do that, particularly when we're talking of tariffs at 25%. Maybe at 10% it might be worth considering, but at 25%, probably economically unfeasible. The importer can pass on the costs of the tariff, and that will mean that the consumers will have to pay more. Now, in the United States, the consumers are fat and happy. They've had tax cuts, they've had low interest for a long time. The economy is good, almost full employment. Maybe the consumers will be okay with that. What could happen is that the producers, i.e. the exporters, could say, well, that's too hard to export it to the US, I'll export it somewhere else. So they might find alternative markets for those products that have been tariffed. Now we're talking about changing trade flows and changing freight routes, and therefore ramifications in the air freight forwarding business. And from the importer's side, what they could say is, well, instead of importing it from a country where there's a tariff, I'll import it from somewhere else. So I'll find a substitution supply for my products that is not impacted by the tariffs. <laughs> <laughs>